So you've got your production almost there. You're happy with the arrangement, the bass, the drums, the leads, the vocals, everything's in place and you're pretty satisfied with all of that. Then really one of your very last steps now is the mix down process. And this is where you're looking at uh, getting your levels right and working with uh, equalizers and making sure that there's no interfering frequencies. This is really where you need to focus entirely on those areas in your overall production. Now, uh, this production itself is a fairly simple production. Um, there's not stacks and stacks of synths layered on top of each other. You know, the most I've got is probably two synths playing the same thing. Um, I know a lot of people tend to stack up sort of 10, 15, 20 of the same synths playing different elements. And that can get incredibly complex uh, when you're trying to listen out for certain frequencies. It also means that if you've got multiple instruments playing similar notes and there is uh, an interfering frequency somewhere, then you know replicating that is just going to make it worse. So one of the biggest tricks I've got for that is here. So looking at the screen, I've got the uh, production right in front of me. And now this is a trick that I tell everyone and not everyone does because it can be very, very annoying. But this is it. Bounce all individual tracks. And this is before you start your mix down, but you have to be absolutely happy with your production first. So I'm gonna bounce it all down as stems. I'm gonna go 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, no dither, no analysis, no normalizing, no mono. Hit export. And I've got a folder called stems. And I'm gonna name it zero because each one will be bounced out with a zero at the beginning. But while that runs itself in the background, uh, I'm gonna explain why. So the whole point of this is that you need to be absolutely happy with your production first. And I always found uh, when I felt like I was happy with my production, and then I go, right, I'm getting to the last stages. Now is the time to start thinking about the mix levels and everything like that. And, uh, you know, to an extent, some effects, maybe some reverb here and there, maybe some high pass filters, maybe some sweeps and something, uh, maybe the way a synth comes in isn't quite right. But again, those are sorts of things that, that when you're doing your own mix down, you can treat at the mix down stage. However, what I always found was I would get to that point and then let's say, for example, I used a, a, a pluck synth and it was square wave. And halfway through me adjusting all the levels and the gains, I start to then second guess myself and start to question it and start to go, well, was I right to use a square wave there? Maybe if I used a saw wave, would, would that be better? And I'll start tweaking with that. And oh, actually on this synth, there's some great presets and I'll start flicking through some presets. And before I know it, I've lost half an hour, an hour, however long, you know, and it gets to a point where I'm just constantly second guessing all the instrumentation, all the sound design. And then I'll start going, oh, actually is the arrangement right there? And before you know it, you're straight back to the production and the sound design stage and you've forgotten you were even doing a mix down. And then you start going, oh, I need to do the mix down. And you end up in this, this vicious circle. And that's when you know none of us ever finish the mix down. So for me, it's about purposefully annoying myself and forcing myself to sort of go, no, I'm just gonna focus on the mix of this track. So that's why I've exported all the stems and that's why I'm then gonna just open up a new project and I'll load those stems in and I'll see you on the other side. So here we are and it's loading in the background still. Now uh, this is uh, essentially all you need to do. 
because I can switch the warp off and that doesn't matter. Everything's going to be in sync and it's not a problem. And this is really the point where I can then highlight all the channels, minimize them and just have them straight like that. I can jump across and maybe resize these windows. So I'm then looking at all the levels and there they are in front of me. And that's when I can just start playing with the mixer and there's no, um, there's no VSTs in front of me. There's no, uh, there's no, heavy CPU intensive VSTs running in the background. So it's actually freed up a lot of um, uh, CPU space for my computer to really start working on things. So I can start throwing things around and I can really start playing with the mix without even considering, you know, what if I change the preset? Well, if I want to change the preset of this lead synth or whatever it is, um, it means going back to the previous project and then re-exporting and then re-importing into this project and that becomes a bit of a nightmare so this is why i say a lot of people hate using this technique i hate doing this technique but it also kind of teaches me a lesson along the way because you'll start to learn that there are maybe patterns you start picking up maybe you notice that you keep using a certain type of baseline that that actually uh causes uh, some bad interaction with the kick drums or maybe you you constantly uh, write your tracks in the key of whatever G minor or something that that actually doesn't work in some sort of frequency range and uh, these are the moments you start to really delve deep into it because you can absolutely forget about your production and you know whether you used the right preset on something or not because hopefully by this stage, you've already crossed that bridge um, and burnt the bridge behind you. So this is really what it's all about. It's about getting that producer hat off and putting on your mix down hat and, and really focusing just on the mix levels and not thinking about anything else. And because there's nothing else in front of you to distract you from that, um, I find personally, if I don't do this, I just never end up finishing a track. I hope this helps. Cheers. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.